everyone, my name is Melissa Fry, author, book editor, and author educator at IndieAuthorLearning.com. Today we are going to talk about getting started with writing your book. So maybe you have a book idea, maybe you kind of just know that you want to write a book but you're not sure where to start. This video is for you. We're going to talk through the three different things that you need to have in place before you start writing your book. And this isn't this long homework project, I promise. It's really just simple to get you in that mindset so that you can actually sit down and finish your book. to know is you need to have the right mindset. You need to get into the right mindset of your book so that you are able to put those words on the page and you don't have to fight with them. You don't have to be distracted by all these different things that could take your focus away from what you're actually working on. So there are three different things that can help you get in, into that mindset. Some ideas I came up with and maybe you have some more. So let's talk through those three things. First, you can create a playlist for your book. I love to do this. I take my favorite songs, usually the albums that I'm obsessed with at the time, and um, always things that I have listened to a lot because I have to write to familiar music. If I listen to music that is unfamiliar to me, it distracts me. But if it's music that I've heard a lot and I can kind of tune out a little bit, um, I love to write to that. So I create a writing playlist. I get all of my favorite albums, I put them on this playlist, I write to that. I also create a second playlist that's kind of like, I look at it as kind of the, um, like when movies have like a soundtrack that comes out with it, that's how I also create it. So if I'm writing a scene and there's a song that happens to come on that really fits that scene, I'll put it on the writing playlist. Or if it's one that really fits the theme of the book, I will do that. And then I create a, a playlist of about 12 songs or so. It helps me get in that mood to write my book even when I'm not writing. So I listen to the longer playlist while I'm writing and then the shorter one while I'm not writing to get me in that mindset. Sometimes I used to listen to it on my way home from work or um, just to get me kind of focused in, in that world because it's usually songs that came from the big playlist that I, you know, they're in that same theme. A second idea is to find inspiration pictures that fit your setting or the locations or your characters. I love to do this. My favorite site for this is unsplash.com, but I know a lot of author friends who use Pinterest for this as well. Um, even just Google because it's just for you. So create some sort of folders or collage or something for your characters. Um, that's a good place to start, but also location settings. They really help you visualize the scene and help you kind of get into it and be able to picture it more clearly than you would be able to just in your head. And if you are good at drawing, this is a great time to draw some of the inspiration pics, especially if you're writing things that um, you don't have any real world inspiration for. I am not a drawer, so I could not do it. But if that's your thing, it might be a fun way to help you get into the mindset of your book. And the third one is to develop a pre-writing routine. So we're going to talk about this probably a little bit later, but this is more about just getting your head in the game. Maybe you go through the characters' names, or maybe you reread a little bit of what you've written already. Maybe there was something that inspired you to write the book and you go back to that. Something to help you get your mind right in that same position that you were when you were excited about the story, you're motivated to write. Get your head in that space and then you'll be able to write so much easier. Okay, the second thing you need to get right is your story. You need to understand how that is going to work. Now, there are different ways to write. There are people called plotters and those writers tend to plot out their story before they start writing. If that is you, then you would outline your book. That's going to be something that you do in this stage. You outline the book, you outline the different scenes, you outline the story, and even though it might change in the future, you still are going to mostly stick to your outline. If you are a pantser like me, you're probably not going to do this as much, but I like to have kind of general ideas of like maybe this happens or this could happen 
or I know there's a character that needs to come in at some point, but I'm not sure where. And I just kind of write out a list of questions to myself and keep those in mind um, at the end of my document as I'm writing. So I can refer to those questions of like, did I bring that person in? Did the, and maybe the story goes a different direction and that's okay, that's cool. Sometimes I'll say, well, we didn't need that. But um, whatever it takes for you to understand how your story is going to play out, however little or however much you need to do to be able to start writing. The second thing you can do to get your story right in your head is to write character profiles and descriptions. This can go right along with all of those um, photo inspiration you found in the earlier, the one we talked about earlier, but really getting to know your characters the best. For me, I write character driven stories. And so those characters really tell me the story as I'm writing. So the better you know your characters, the easier it will be for you to understand how the story will play out. They'll just tell you what, what's going on. You won't even have to worry about it. So get your character descriptions out, get their profiles done. Even if no one is ever going to read them, even if it's content you will never put in the book, understand their middle name, their favorite flavor of ice cream, <laughs> their uh, favorite childhood memory, their worst childhood memory, whatever it is that helps you understand your characters completely, write those down. It really helps and I've actually refer back referred back to those character profiles I wrote, even though I've changed some things. Um, but I've referred back to those character profiles because it's really helpful to say, okay, yeah, this is the character that I envisioned in my head. These are characteristics of them. And if I kind of get off track or parts of them are a little hazy for me, I can always refer back to those profiles I created. So the third idea to get your story really clear in your head is to do your research. Research locations, research professions. I do this a lot. Um, the professions that my characters have in the books, I make sure that I know exactly what they would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I actually at one point wrote someone traveling through the Amazon and I found a blog where someone had walked the Amazon completely and it was really interesting and super informative for the research aspect of it. Um, you can also use Google Street View for this and if you have an actual location on earth that you're at, you can use Street View to really get a picture of what your character would be seeing. So for me, the research part is fun. I like to look into these things. Also, because I am a pantser, I tend to start writing and as I go, say, oh, I need to research this. So it'll kind of stop me in the middle of writing. I'll research it and then get back to writing. But you have to find what works for you. Sometimes people do like to do most of the research before they even start writing. And then when you're writing the book and you don't have to stop to research, it doesn't stop your flow as much and you're actually able to probably write a little bit faster. But whatever process works for you, that's what you need to do. Okay, so the third thing you need to get in place are the right tools. You need to know, well, we're just because we're gonna stick with that, three different things. First, you need to know what program you're going to write in. That's kind of simple. Um, and Actually, you don't even need a program on a computer. You could just be using pen and paper. But how are you going to write your first draft? There are, there's Google Docs. That's a popular one. Word is probably the one I see the most. Um, Pages, which is Mac's version of Word, and that's what I used to write. Um, and then Scrivener's a popular one, and there are others. But whatever you use to write, and of course, pen and paper works too, Whatever you use to write, decide on what's going to work best for you. Now this may take some trial and error. You may start using Google Docs and decide that you don't really like it. Or you obviously, if you don't have a Mac, you wouldn't use Pages, but <laughs> figure out what is going to work for you in the long term. And it's okay if you change it. That's what copy paste is for. But if you are using a program that does not auto save, get yourself in the habit of automatically saving. Like I've gotten into the habit where I type because I write in Pages and it there is an autosave feature now, but back when I started writing, there was not. Um, at least I think there's an autosave, but I've gotten used to actually saving it myself. So I have the keyboard shortcut for save memorized as I write, as I write, and I just like, as soon as I paused to, to think about what I'm gonna write next, I autosave. So get in the habit of doing that, or use something like Google Docs that automatically saves everything and all the iterations of your books. So you don't have to worry about losing it because that is like, the worst thing when you lose your book. So a little note about that too, is always save your document where it can be recovered. You do not want to save your document on your, your laptop, your computer, on your hard drive. You want to save it in the cloud. Somewhere you have access to it, wherever you are, but also 
if your computer breaks down, you don't want to lose your document. So I always back mine up to the cloud because it's more helpful for me. I can access it anywhere. And it's just, there's a lot of cloud services for this iCloud or Dropbox. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but find what works for you and make sure you're saving it to the cloud so you do not lose your manuscript, please. It will save you a lot of headache in the future. The second thing focuses on what you hear as you write. For me, it's really distracting if I don't have a baseline of sound. So that's why I listen to music while I write. And I generally, I find that listening to rock music actually helps me the most because the music tends to not have really high highs and really low lows. For example, like classical music that'll get really quiet and then it'll swell, that can be more distracting to me because it's there's not the bass line. So I prefer listening to maybe rock music or pop music. Um, again, things that I have listened to a lot and I know the words for the most part, I could sing along in my sleep if I had to, because it's not distracting. So you can always go back to old music that you've heard. I have, um, I reuse the same band because there's one band that I really like to listen to as I write because I love all of their music. It's a solid rock band. They sound, their albums are all different, but they all kind of sound the same. So I can get into that flow and it helps me really get into the writing spirit, I guess, <laughs> into the writing mindset. So whatever it is that you would like to write to, figure that out, use your playlist. Or if you don't want to write to music, are you going to find a quiet place where no one will be distracting you? Or are you going to use noise canceling headphones so that you don't be distracted? Whatever it is, address what you're hearing so that you don't get distracted by that and get pulled out of your story. And then you won't be able to actually write and get your book done. Okay, so the third thing, and it's kind of like, I guess we're talking about senses, which I never intended when we started talking about this, but <laughs> are you going to eat or drink anything as you write? Do you need something next to you that you can just maybe a snack? Or um, I always have to write with water. I have water, well, all the time when I'm anywhere. But especially when I'm writing, I have to have water nearby so that if I need a break, a mental shift or a mental break, just really quickly, I'll take a sip of water, keeps me hydrated, keeps my brain moving. It's always important for me. Some writers like to write with tea or coffee, whatever it is. If you need a snack, if you have like little pieces of chocolate or pretzels or something that you eat uh, while you write, then that would be great. But figure out what works for you and gets you in the right environment so you're able to write your book without all these distractions. Okay, so I think that kind of covers how to start getting started <laughs> on writing your book. But the important thing to, to know here, and there's a quote and I don't know who said it, but the important thing to note here is that thinking about writing, planning to write, it's not writing. You actually have to start writing. So once you get your mindset right, once you get the right tools in place, and once you get your story figured out, start writing. Once everything is in place, you can have the peace of mind that you know you've done all the work at the beginning to get everything set up so that you are less distracted and you can actually put words on the page. Okay, well, that is all I have for today. I hope it was really helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Do not forget to subscribe. We're doing videos every Friday. And I would love if you leave a comment below if any of these have resonated with you, if it's something you're going to try, or maybe something that I haven't mentioned that you do in your writing routine that can help the rest of us out. I would love to hear about it. All right, my name is Melissa Fry, author, book editor, and author educator at IndieAuthorLearning.com. I'll see you later. Bye.